All right, we're back, folks. We're skipping down to another health one, because these are always funny, right? <laughs> oh, I have to re-click the DOS box. You need eyeglasses. Yes! <laughs> the first day... Oh, sorry. The first day you wear them in school, everyone calls you four eyes. Your parents refuse to get you contact lenses. Why would you wear contact lenses? <laughs> anyway, hurt or self-conscious? What? Your moods are hurt or self-conscious? Self-conscious? Alright, you can refuse to wear the glasses or wear the glasses and tolerate the names. Wear the glasses and tolerate it? Awesome. Your social status suffers mildly as a result of the glasses, but no one will notice. I notice. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go down to a different... I'm trying to get different tokens. Different looking tokens. Uh, you and your family are at a holiday get-together. Uncle Sam is sitting in the corner of the room, and he wants you... Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, drinking from a funny-looking glass. He's the one who always kisses you and squeezes you hard whenever you see him. Um. Mom says to mind him because he's your father's brother, but you don't like him. <laughs> he always smells like whiskey. Here he comes now calling out your name and saying that you are his little darling. Bad touch! Bad touch! <laughs> Frightened slash shy or mad? Shy? I'm frightened. <laughs> so, so together we're frightened slash shy. Okay, you can walk away or stand there and wait for him. Run away. Stand and wait. No, you need to get out of this. <laughs> get away. <laughs> Flee. Why? Because he's a pervert. <laughs> he's a drunken child molester, for all we know. Well, we'll find out, now, won't we? <laughs> okay, fine. You want to get molested by your uncle, it's not my fault. You stand there, stiff and nervous, waiting for him to, um, to greet you and get it over with. He scoops his hand under your arms and lifts you close to his body. Holy cow, you're like 12! <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> his face is rough and prickly. You can squirm or keep still. Keep still. He holds you from under your arms. Uh... Uh, you can smell the drinks on his breath. It's awful. Finally, your mother comes over and asks you to do an errand for her. Thank goodness. You notice Mom saying something to him. He's laughing and saying, don't be silly. It's perfectly normal to pick up 12-year-old girls. Mom has a stern look on her face. <laughs> Later, when you see Mom, she seems mad at you. But you can't figure out why. She's mad at you? What the hell did I do? You were freaking- yes, the child should always be punished for being molested. It's clearly their fault. <laughs> you are in a candy store buying candy with a $5 bill given to you by your mother. The bill comes to 50 cents. The man gives you back change, but no dollars. You can be angry, confused, or content. Confused. You can leave the store or question the man. Question. I should have phoned out us. <laughs> the man tells you that you gave him a one dollar bill. You can, be, you can be content with that or disagree. You're obviously Disag disagreeing. You lie. He says, come on now, girly. I told you. Now get out of here. You can keep disagreeing or you can get help. Get help. Mommy told my goddess. <laughs> Who do you want to go to for help? Get the police woman on the corner or get mom. Go get the police woman. Police woman, he stole my money. You tell the police woman the story. She inquires about the incident. The store owner says, Listen, toots, the little brat gave me a one. This was the wrong thing to say to the police woman. <laughs> she beats him severely, calling out things like, Stop resisting, stop resisting. Oh no, sorry. She makes the man check the cash register. He has four dollars more than he should. The police woman calls the station house and finds out that he has done this three times in the last week. Two weeks later, the store is shut down. It was a front for a numbers racket. The store owner is never heard from again. Yeah! I caught a crook. 
<laughs> you took my candy money. How dare you? <laughs> you will suffer greatly. <laughs> I you took four dollars from me. Suffer. You will suffer. You were in the house bored with absolutely nothing to do. Why are you constantly in the house bored with nothing to do? Oh, oh your mother like, your, me by myself. your mother is there. Your mother keeps telling you, read a book. Or you could okay. watch TV or play a computer game. <laughs> you look over at the telephone and wonder, how many children in town, in this state, in this country, in the whole world, are bored at this very second? Why not try and make a new friend? <laughs> you are retarded. <laughs> You can be inquisitive or apprehensive. Apprehensive. Why? Because you're about to just start cold calling people? You can yes. dial the phone or leave the phone alone. Leave it alone. Bad idea. You have evidently thought long and hard about the possibility of randomly dialing phone numbers. Your freedom to play outside for the next week and your parents' telephone bill will both be spared. Will have both been spared. Thoughtfulness and trustworthiness have both increased. Yay. I'm not stupid. Billy Harper is the cutest guy in your class. My god! <laughs> this is ridiculous. There was Russell, there was Mark, there was what's his name? Rob. You, and now there's what's his name? Your hall of broken hearts is long <laughs> and has many twists I and turns. Have many trophies. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Anyway. You have been giving each other the eye for about two weeks now. Okay? You are all set to talk to him. Why that's in air quotes, I don't know. When you... When you... Uh, or when your best friend, who happens to have nicer clothes and is prettier than you... Aw, oh, no one's prettier than Phoenix. <laughs> confesses that she cannot sleep at night because of him. She asks your advice about the best way to meet him, unaware that you, too, are smitten by him. You can be jealous, frank about your feelings, or sympathetic. Frank about my feelings. You can give advice, or admit that you like him, too. Admit that I like him, too. Bringing your feelings out into the open prevents you from acting on them in a destructive way. Yeah. You can agree that you can both try to meet him, Agree not to interfere with your friend's bid for his attention. We can both try to get his attention. Let him decide. This doesn't sit comfortably with either of you, or with either you or your friend. You both then why decide. Why did I suggest him? It didn't feel what? You Keep both. Stupid. You both decide that your friendship is more important than a date with Billy. No, it's not. <laughs> well, considering in the past my dates with these guys have. Get then, again, then again, you are juggling three men right now. One of whom, by this point, is like 17. <laughs> Alright. Mrs. Mulberry, your teacher, has asked you to be her special assistant for the school bake sale. Why is this always followed up by baking? <laughs> Already. Stop letting go. We fall in love and we make cookies. Baking. <laughs> Man <laughs> baking. <laughs> Alright. Already, you know, I dread to think of the day when you might have to choose between your love of men and your love of baking. <laughs> oh no. Alright. Uh Do not think of <laughs> Already, your friends are whispering that you are the you are a teacher's pet behind your back. I have some crappy friends. You can be snotty, embarrassed, but comp but uh, compliant, or flattered. Flattered. You can say, I'm not going to do anything like that. Say, yes, ma'am. Or say, I would be happy to help you. Yes, ma'am. Your friends call you a brown nose and a teacher's pet. Your current level of hostility suggests that you would not be able to take something like this in stride. You have a screaming fight with your friends and are taken <laughs> off the bake sale. What? You've that just no sense. You've just passed through childhood. Fam family life is progressing very well. 
Dad is still the greatest hero of all time, and Mom is pretty terrific, too. She's not. No, she's not. She's never there. <laughs> Physically, you are not very healthy. Be careful to avoid situations that could lead to illness. Socially, this can be an awkward phase of life. Hell yes! Especially when you hit the ripe old age of 9 or 10. Should you <laughs> like boys? Apparently you've made that decision. Should you not like boys? No, you're pretty much a cockhound at this point. Decisions, decisions. All in all, you are developing good social skills. You don't always chew, close your mouth when you are chewing food, but hey, nobody's perfect. You, what? You're like in high school now. What's wrong with you? <laughs> now regarding your emotional and personality development. You are a remarkably trustworthy young lady. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age. Yes, a child at the... <laughs> Right. <laughs> at the age of, like, I think you're 14 now, actually. You have a gentle, easygoing way about you, most of the time. <laughs> you have not That's had... That's pretty accurate, actually. <laughs> you have not had much of a problem getting teachers to like you, and you seem to be able to control your temper, even when the boys tease you. And molest you. You are about to enter adolescence. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've gone through it already. It is a time of it is a hectic time of life, full of surprises. There will be many high highs and many low lows. With each year, you will gain responsibilities. You may also notice that people will begin to start forgiving you less for things previously described as mere childhood habits. You will be expected to act like a lady and become helpful around the house and bake. Sometimes you may become moody and teary with no reason at all. Oh yes, there's the matter of boys. Which seems to be what this entire game revolves around. Steineric didn't... You know what? I love how the male version didn't revolve nearly this much around girls. Because, you know... <laughs> men take sex in stride. It's women that are obsessive and compulsive about it. If you haven't noticed them much in this phase, oh, I'm pretty sure we've noticed. I'm sure you will soon. They'll also be noticing you quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Welcome to adolescence. Four be the things I am wiser to know. Idleness, sorrow, a friend, and a foe. Four be the things I'd better without love. I'd be better without love, curiosity, freckles, and doubt. <laughs> okay. First things first, you need a boyfriend. So, we will select... First, we're going to see your age for a second. Oh, you're 13. Your stress level is too high. Why are you so stressed? <clears throat> Calm down. I have no idea. All right, and you're doing pretty good in all the stats. You're not very calm anymore. You're down to 28 calmness. Yeah, you're Don't 40... Don't blame you. <laughs> 54 journalists. <laughs> now, you can blame me for you getting molested. You can't blame me for this. All right. Well... Somehow you can be in high school at 13. I'm not sure how that works. But anyway, uh, we are going to give you a relationship now. You can meet someone, break off someone, have a date with your experienced partner, go steady, talk about becoming engaged to your state partner. You can talk about engaged at 13. First, you want to <laughs> actually have a relationship with someone, though. Yeah. So we're going to meet someone. Where would you like to meet this person? Near home, in school, or outside of school, slash away from home? In school. In school. Got it. Who would you like to meet? John, Jim, Mark, Peter, Brian, Jeff, Josh, or Frank? I now have one extremely important question for you, Phoenix. What do I have to do to get on this list? <laughs> <laughs> Live in my state would be a start. All right. So, um, John, Jim, Mark, Peter, Brian, Jeff, Josh, or Frank? Peter. Peter. Saint Peter. You have chosen to meet with Peter. His characteristics may be described as as follows. He is very trustworthy. He is moderately gentle. <laughs> <laughs> he is not very calm. He is not very happy. He is not very confident. He is moderately good looking. Yay. You meet Peter in the cafeteria. 
After talking with one another for a while and giving each other time to get a good first impression, you talk about going out. The, mo the big moment comes when, you, when he finally asks you for a date and you accept. There you go. You've got a boyfriend. Peter. Yay. He's moderately attractive. Eh, it's better than nothing. Apparently it's better than what Stein Eric It is got. better than Stein Eric because he got an ugly girl. He got Henrietta, the ugly chick. <laughs> it's ten minutes until the bell rings for Jim. Mrs. Black, otherwise known as Orca. Why? She's a whale? I guess. <laughs> what, what, was she like Shamu or Keiko no, like, or something? I don't know. Anyway, can be such a pain with her uh, calisthenics. Yes, calisthenics are a pain. I hate them with a passion. Everyone <laughs> is going to the mall after school, and the last thing you want to do is sweat like a horse. No one will go near you. Imagine taking your shoes off in the shoe store and knocking ev out everyone in the place. Gross! This is going to take some quick thinking. Alright, you can be honest or creative. <sighs> creative. Good. You can go to gym class or try and avoid going to gym class. I guess avoid is going to gym class, to be honest. Alright. You think of several excuses, but illness and injury seem to be the most likely ways to get out of going to gym class. You approach Mrs. Black with a look of false pain and woe that she has seen a million times before. What's the matter with you, she says menacingly. Alright, you can... Oh, these are good. You can tell her that you have an injury. You can tell her the truth. Or you can tell her that you are having your period and do not feel well. Somehow I don't think she's going to give a damn if I tell her I'm on my period. No. And obviously she's not going to care if I tell her the truth. So we're going to go with injury. <laughs> uh, all right. If you had an injury, you should not have taken the class. She asks you if you have a doctor's note. Lie about the note. Tell her that you don't have a note. I don't have a note. Well, next time, you had better get one. Physical education is one of the most important disciplines you are learning. No, it's not! Sorry. Look at me. I may look a little heavy, but that's all in my genes. I am really a high school gym teacher who's, out, who's uh, overweight. Who's surprised? Uh, I am completely solid. She pauses for a brief coughing fit. Everyone knows she smokes three packs of cigarettes a day. <laughs> You have listened to a long-winded lecture, but by the time she's through, the bell is already rung. Yay! <laughs> now that's oh, creativity. Man. Yeah, that is such bullshit. Physical education is not. Physical education is frankly the least important <laughs> subject you will ever learn. Don't let anyone tell you different. Yeah. You are in one of your yeah. ultra-cool moves. Phoenix, do you actually have ultra cool moves? Moods? Not moves. <laughs> I was going to say, what's, what? Moods. Um, sure. While cruising through the house, you bump your foot on a piece of furniture. Why are you cruising? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is his idea of a teenager? I don't know. I'm pretty that we have these moments of ultra coolness and just, like, cruise through our living rooms? With your pimp strut, <laughs> you bump your foot on a piece of furniture and let a swear word and let a swear word sneak out. Your mother calls you in from the other room. She says, "Did you think what I thought you said?" Did you what? Did you say what I thought you said? She's upset that you swore. You can be truthful, less than truthful, or too cool to care. Truthful. Tell her you did and apologize. Tell her you didn't, or tell her you did and so what. I did and apologize. I'm not sure why you need to apologize. Your mom's, your mother was obviously swearing back when you were like two years old at the washing machine. Am I the <laughs> only one mo noticing that she's a massive hypocrite? Yep. <laughs> Wisely, you drop the cool act. It's important to be cool, but when mom has her temper up, 
she can put you on the ice permanently. Intellectual sphere rate increases sharply. Yay! You're smart. I'm a genius. <laughs> <laughs> the family dog has been acting a little peculiar lately, and no one can figure out why. It barks in the middle of your Let's Plays. Some of your fellow family members suggest that maybe he should be given away, or worse, put to sleep. Dad delivers an ultimatum. The dog must shape up or ship out. You are the only one in the house who can take the responsibility for getting him back into shape. You can feel like taking on the responsibility. Don't feel like taking on the responsibility. Take on the responsibility. You can train the dog. Like everybody else in the damn house is lazy. You can train the dog or don't train the dog. Train the dog. You begin to train old Yeller. And, uh, oh, sorry. You spend every available minute keeping an eye on him, on the dog. Rewarding him for good behavior and keeping him out of trouble. One day, when you return home from school, you smell what can only be the dog's byproducts. Number two, to be specific. The smell is emanating from your parents' bedroom. Uh -oh. You enter the bedroom to find the dog sleeping peacefully in the corner and a sculpture sitting squarely atop Dad's favorite pillow. Fortunately, <laughs> no one is home. You can dispose of the pillow and play dumb later, try to wash the pillow, dispose of the pillow, and admit the truth. Try to wash the pillow. <laughs> that actually doesn't really work that well. I've tried it. But if you want to do it again. All right. You scrape the sculpture off the pillow and throw it away outside the house. The pillow and pillowcase are left with a large brown and smelly ring. After three machine washings, your mother keeps yelling, What are you doing down there? And, um, no one, given your previous history, we probably don't want to know. Uh, the smell comes out of the pillowcase, but the pillow still has the stain. Not only that, the pillow now weighs 30 pounds because it is waterlogged. It will never be dry by the time Dad gets home. What will you do? Ask for Mom's help or tell Dad the story. Ask for Mom's help. She is very sympathetic, as it turns out. Dad couldn't tell his favorite pillow from a pile of bricks. She makes a quick substitution and all is well. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she was finally a good parent. A few people got a little wild playing spin the bottle uh -huh. oh, no. at a friend's house yesterday. As a result, your neck looks like it was stung by a pack of wild hornets. Oh, As God. you walk out of the bathroom, Mom inquires about the curious-looking marks. You can be embarrassed, crafty, or out of it. Out of it? What does that mean? I don't know. Stoned? <laughs> um, out of it. You can give an excuse or tell the truth. Give an excuse. Really? You think she's gonna be fooled? How dumb do you think your mom is? I don't know. She's been pretty dumb so far. <laughs> You have chosen a well-tested and time-honored adolescent defense to avoid talking about something that might be anxiety-provoking. Putting yourself up in the clouds makes you inaccessible to either real or imagined dangers. It works fine, but has only one drawback. While you are flying around up in the sky, your real feelings are driven deep inside you. They can surface at a time <laughs> that they might catch you off guard. As a result, you may get suddenly depressed. Okay. <laughs> okay. You are at the... Dr oh, this is good. You are at the drugstore purchasing some feminine articles. You are about to bring them up to the cash register when you notice that Mike Barty is the cashier. What, your 20th boyfriend? <laughs> you can be embarrassed or normal. Normal. You can bring them up to the register or avoid going to the register. Bring them to the register. Mike sees you and gives you a big hello. While he is packing your stuff, he throws in two packets of gum from behind the register and smiles. He didn't even seem to pay attention to what he was ringing up. Of course he didn't. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Well, I think in Stein Eric's he was buying condoms. And as I recall, he tried to proposition his <laughs> the woman <laughs> ringing him up. But, you know, that's a different story. 
right. You and your friends are all going, have gone, all gone to the, east, to the shore for a beach party. Great. It's late at night. One of your friends has a suggestion. Uh, How much you, okay, sports. so what do you think it is? Just make a guess. Uh, skinny dipping? Yes, he says, let's go skinny dipping. Oh, wow, sugar. You, you know this game. <laughs> Shy or uninhibited? What now? Shy or uninhibited? Shy this time. I've learned my lesson. You can take your clothes off. Wait for everyone else to take their clothes off or keep your clothes on. Keep them on. Last time I got involved in this kind of stuff, I was molested. <laughs> All right. Like most daring fantasies that come up during adolescence, everyone has big ideas, but few follow through on them. Several people actually go skinny dipping, but almost everyone keeps his or her clothes on. Go figure. Smart. Unlike my friends. Apparently. <laughs> Mei Li is a new Chinese student who can barely speak English. She appears awkward, is not aware of modern styles of dress, and is a bit clumsy. Everyone in school has begun to make fun of her. So everybody's, everybody and this writer are racist. Basically. Pretty much. <laughs> Sympathetic. Why would she not be dressing up to modern code because she's from China? Uh, I don't know. What she's, does that mean? She's dressed, I don't know, like a freaking... She's dressed like, um... Oh, so she's dressed she's, in like... She's dressed like a... What's the chick from Street Fighter 2? May, May Lee or something? I don't know. No, that's the actual girl's name. You know, with the kicks, the that chick. Chun Li. Chun Li, that's it. All right. Yeah, that's what she's dressed like. So, are you sympathetic <laughs> for Chun Li or unconcerned? Okay, wait. What now? Are you sympathetic for Chun Li or unconcerned? Sympathetic. Poor Chun Li. She was actually always my favorite character. That kick move was pretty awesome. <laughs> try to make, fr try to make friends or ignore her. Make friends. It was only using her that I was ever able to beat M. Bison. <laughs> you approach her, and with tremendous difficulty, try to make conversation. She seems very shy and self-conscious about her communication difficulties. Your friends think you are stupid for wasting your time with her. My friends are dicks! What is with this game? It seems hopeless that the two of you will ever be able to understand one another. You can give up or keep trying. Keep trying, because I want a new friend. My Mo friends are douchebags. Months pass, and May begins to learn English very quickly. Just think of how long it would take you to learn Chinese if it were the other way around. As soon as she is able to express herself, she tells you that she appreciates your sympathy and friendship. You have made a lifelong friend, who we'll hey. never hear about again. <laughs> we'll just hear about all the douchebag ones. You are on the school bus on a class field trip, getting cozy with your newest... boy -o? Okay. <laughs> You're getting cozy with your boyfriend. Anyway, you can be amorous but, indis but discreet, amorous but indiscreet, or not amorous. Amorous but discreet. You can begin a makeout session, just cuddle, <laughs> or have an intellectual discussion. Of an intellectual discussion. That doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you that one doesn't work. Don't try it. So, we'll so you can begin a makeout session or just cuddle. Cuddle. There you go. Typical woman. How romantic. <laughs> you are a, Oh, we obvious me and the game obviously have different views. How romantic. <laughs> you are a sensitive person. Your boyfriend is equally sensitive. Social spheres and severe positive emotional indicators rise. Yay. See, I told you to cuddle. Well, <laughs> it was either that or make out. Stein Eric tried making out, and that didn't work either. No. He got shut down pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> it might have had something... It's kind of gross on a field trip. It might have had oh. something to do with the fact that he couldn't go through with it since his girlfriend was ugly, but, you know... <laughs> oh, it looks like we are almost out of time, so I'm going to uh, stop the episode now, early. And, uh, yeah, we'll be back in the next episode where we will continue to explore high school. Oops. Fun.